All right, ladies and gentlemen, Fab's in the house. And today I've got the Diskin IDF here with me for a review. Uh, but first of all, don't forget to like the video and to subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying this kind of content. And let's get started analyzing the look, the sound, and the feel of this uh, guy over here. Let's see how big this is, first of all. Around 7.5 inch long. Uh, uh, overall with a 3.5 inch long blade and uh, I would say 4 inch long handle and let's see how this does compare up against uh, uh, some of the big boys in the house we have uh, uh, Ontario Red number one we've got Ontario Red number two look at this right in between and that is uh, uh, what uh, matters and uh, this is the Spyderco Para 3 smaller than this and uh, Spyderco Paramilitary 2 also of course uh, uh, bigger than that uh, but you can see that the handle size is kind of like comparable to the uh, Para 3 but uh, a little bit more cutting edge over here what else we have? Of course, small Sebenza 21 in a Spirograph Damascus blade. Really, really cool and small. And this is the large Sebenza 21, both by Chris Reeve Knives. And you can see, of course, this guy is again right in between these two offerings by Chris Reeve Knives. And uh, also, we can do a nice comparison up against Shirogorov Neon Zero and his bigger brother Shirogorov F95R Slim, fantastic blade. So basically, this is a tad smaller than the Shirogorov F. Um, sorry, the Shirogorov Neon Zero. Another couple I can show you over here for sure. We've got uh, TRM Atom and TRM Neutron uh, over there. And look at that. Again, it's a middle size knife. Not too small, not too big. Right in between these two guys. Uh, another popular option, of course. Uh, Rick Hinder, Hinder Knives, uh, XM18, 3.5 inches. And uh, what else can I show you over here? Uh, we've got this uh, interesting one. This is the Wii Knives uh, uh, Yuchi. Big, big boy uh, over here indeed. So you get the idea of how big this guy is. Another one, uh, pretty interesting with some nice fingerprints on it. Uh, this is the Ferrum Forge uh, slash uh, drop collaboration Buck or Buccaneer. And another beauty in the house since we are going to talk about this milling over here. This is the Steve Skiff Accomplice with some beautiful milling going on. For sure, like some beautiful milling going on over here with this Richard Rogers OEM, uh, which is a pretty cool and small knife. If you want to see something bigger, you've got this big boy front flipper, uh, Assassin Knives Argo right over there. What else can I show you? Yes, just because we have it here, this is the Terzuola slash drop collaboration Persian Cyrus, uh, Micarta, Liner Lock, and that is it. No. I'm gonna show you also like this whole blade work Spectre V4 just because I love it and just because the milling is absolutely phenomenal on this one. So uh, this is the Matt Diskin IDF uh, knife. This is, by the way, an integral knife. So this is made from a solid chunk of titanium and milled out internally. Uh, and uh, cut and bent and uh, milled. I mean, there's a lot of things going on in this one. So I want you just to look at the milling going on in this one because uh, it is really, really nicely made. Absolutely beautiful. I mean, look at this. There's a radius here. It's not just like a, this is radius. Uh, it's it's nice. And uh, you see, like if you look at that, this from this side, it's. Uh, it's not like just flat uh, milled like that. It's it, there's an angle, and um, you can even see it in this pivot collar here. It's angled to a way. See, of course, because it's widening. So very very nice little detail. Also here the over travel stop bar. It's uh, nicely integrated. And this detaches. You can check my uh, disassembly video if you want to know a little bit more. 
So of course, the rigidity is gonna be top notch on this one. There's no standoffs, no uh, backspace or nothing. This is just one solid chunk of titanium. It's fantastically made. I love this, especially this radius area over here, like really, really cool guys. Lanyard hole is integrated right at the end over here. You've got, uh, of course, your uh, um, stainless steel lock face insert screwed in from the outside. Uh, you've got uh, a pretty cool uh, lock release relief over here. I would have hoped for maybe a little bit more here, but it's not a big deal. You can still jam your thumb right over here and it's gonna work absolutely. You've got an external cutout. Uh, uh, for the for the lock bar, you have a ceramic detent ball. Uh, you've got these um, T8 screw uh, pivot screw over here, and it's gonna be the only thing you need to take apart to take out to disassemble this guy. So just take this out, and you're done. You've got uh, nothing else to do. It's very very straightforward maintenance. Just make sure that you're gonna. Uh, place uh, the stainless steel washers that are inside in the correct position and you're going to be pretty much good to go. Of course you've got uh, 3D mill titanium pocket clip nice and a perfect spring tension. Um, the clip ramp is nicely designed on the entering, on the exiting I would say I would have preferred maybe a little bit more acute angle that's a little bit obtuse but it's fine. Tip up carry only, it's not reversible. Uh, you've got a pretty interesting uh, shape uh, uh, for the blade. Uh, M390 steel, no jimping going on, just uh, one angle here and going down, uh, showing this uh, swedge over here. Nice fuller um, over there. I would say 40% belly, straight edge up to the sharpening choil. And if you notice, right over here, the heel of the blade is not sh um, sharpened because it might get, uh, your finger might get snagged over here. So nice little touch attention to the detail. You've got the flipper tab which is jimped all around. There's four grooves which are gonna be serving nicely for the push button or of course a nice light switch action going on. You've got a very subdued disc in logo right over here and just M390 steel logo right over there. So not too much going on and I really like this stuff. I prefer of course like sterile look blades but yay. Yeah. It's not the end of the world. I really appreciate here the plunge grind, uh, which is recessed. So you have like a full, um, a full length, even if they don't sharpen, didn't sharpen, uh, you know, the edge up to the end, it's still looking good. Uh, you've got uh, uh, also some very interesting sound when opening this guy. Look at that. Very deep and strong and authoritary noise that this guy is making. Very, very cool and powerful. From, I mean, a relatively small guy like that, uh, having a sound like this. Sorry, I just hit my hand. It's very, very cool. When you close it, nice clinky sound. Appreciate that. It's very, very good. Um, there's... Um, um, 3.5 ounces they're gonna be uh, hanging around in your pocket when you uh, carry this guy. Um, the ergos are pretty much uh, good uh, except for this point right over here. If you choke it up a little bit too much you see this might be digging in right over here you see like that in this spot over here. So that's the only thing. Clip is not doing anything. Um, overall, reverse grip, it's probably not gonna work that much because the handle is, at least for me, the handle is a little bit on the small side, um, size, sorry. And uh, overall, I mean, the, the, the feeling you get uh, handling this knife is absolutely solid because this is an integral chunk of titanium. It's not gonna go anywhere. Texture is really good. It gives a nice grippy feeling. Uh, the milling lines are uh, adding some nice texture. texture. Uh, your finger wants to feel these lines like that. It's, it's nicely done. Love this uh, uh, radius that it's going on over here. This curvature here, it's really, really cool. And also these lines are very, very pleasant to touch and they're gonna confer some extra grippiness to your 
grip like that. Fit and finish, spot on guys, blades perfectly centered, nothing is moving, no blade play, nothing is rattling, it's nicely done, clip ramp, nice retention, clip release is good, it's nicely balanced, deployment speed, absolutely on like spot on um it, it's also pleasant i mean if you as long as you do uh a light switch you're gonna be good there's not gonna be any finger sore you can still do like a push button but the detent is on the medium strong side so it's gonna be introducing a little bit more finger soreness but still super smooth runs on of course bearings and uh, it's uh, it's it's nicely done there's even like a detent ball ramp but um also one uh, let's say issue is this so uh the uh when uh, when the detent ball hits the detent ball ramp that's the angle it creates uh, uh, with the knife so it means that uh, your finger you see is almost close to the you see that's the action that you get so basically you have to keep the finger like that to clear out the flipper tab or like that and then you can wiggle it otherwise if you're like this it's there's no way that uh, with wiggling you're gonna be able to close the blade so that's only one uh, little issue right there but if you do it like that you see then you're gonna be able to kind of you see what i'm talking about like that you see, it wants to go up. So that's what I'm saying. So that should be a little bit uh, before than that, but it's it's not a huge deal, guys. Um, blades drop shot like that, and then nice wiggle. It's nice and smooth. Uh, of course, you've got the detent ball ramp, which eliminates that hard step. Uh, but overall, it's a very, very interesting uh, looking knife. Uh, great milling. The, the grip is pretty good. Sounds also very, very nice. And uh, yeah, I appreciate this one. So there you have it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to subscribe. And thanks for watching. Stay tuned.